Am I live? I guess I am. <laughs> For a moment there, I thought it wasn't working. So, welcome to Yoga Synthesis. Just need to remind everyone that we're live streaming on yogasynthesis.com. Thank you for joining me. Uh, a lot of you might be joining me later on. Of course, in the first few minutes of this, these live presentations, um, I don't expect that many people to actually show up, but then eventually more people do see it and it's really, it's exciting that way. What I'm gonna do today is do an accessible, relatively easy wall alignment-based yoga practice. Uh, you might want to use a block, and of course you need to have a wall to practice with. You know, a lot of this could be done without the wall and without the props. However, uh, with the wall, it just makes such a difference. It's a really great tool for practicing certain yoga poses, especially if you have lower back issues. The routine that I'm about to take you or demonstrate here, take you through, is could be a really great routine for someone with lumbar issues. And just, of course, the qualifier here is that you should be very careful no matter what. Don't push it. And this kind of, this type of yoga is particularly good because it's really focusing on alignment through the spine, maintaining the natural curvature of your spine. So I'm going to start right in and we'll just maybe as long as everyone is ready, they can uh, use. Well, I'll show you what I have here. I actually have two mats. One is along the wall, one is pointing in towards the wall. And so you definitely want to have a span of the wall that you can use straight in and sideways. Okay? And I also have a yoga block. Now, if you don't have either of those, I'll talk about what you can do to adapt. So, first of all, you just come to all fours facing away from the wall, and you're going to be about five inches or so away from the wall with your heels. Then walk your hands forward, and before we go, we're going to go to a downward dog, but before we lift up, just walk your hands forward and lean out into a puppy dog. Rest your forehead down, turn your fingers out a little bit, so just find that length from the sit bones back to the thing, out to the fingers. Now just lift your head out for a moment. Look forward between your hands and really press your thumbs and spin your upper arms so the biceps turn up. Sit bones reaching back. Now keep that action of the upper arm spinning out. Just turn your fingers out a little more as you settle and bring your forehead back down, but don't let your upper arms rotate in. You can see the challenge. So you may not be able to touch your head down. That's okay. Keep your front ribs in, inner thighs back. Good. Now from here, you might want to just bring your hands a little bit back, but keep that same feeling of the hands pressing, spinning the upper arms externally, and then lift your knees and press your heels to the wall. Really push into the wall and lift your sit bones up. Now get that connection to your hands again and the elbows hugging in. Spin the upper arms externally and your sit bones lift high. Just soften your breath, relax your neck and traction as much as you can through your back. Spinning the inner thighs back. Now you could say this is like a tribute to BKS Iyengar, me doing this. Keep lifting through your thighs, because he truly did amazing things for yoga and for modern yoga. This, most of what I'm doing here is based on Iyengar yoga. Right? So then when you're ready, you're gonna slowly come down, bring your knees down, and we'll stand up and turn and face the wall. So come in close for a moment hands up on the wall and then slowly step back till you're right at a horizontal position. Feet hip width apart. Sometimes we call this a wall dog. So you're trying to create a 90 degree angle. 
Keep the thighs lifting, keep lengthening through your spine. Inner thighs roll back. Now, if you're comfortable going a little lower down, and maybe turn your fingers out like we were doing, the, the spinning, the turning out here makes it so you actually turn your shoulders in external rotation so that you don't collapse into your internal rotation. Right? Keep the sit bones reaching back. Activate through the feet and the legs. Like I said, if you feel comfortable leaning just a little bit further down, just a couple more breaths and lengthen, activate through the arms. Good, now slowly come back up. We'll turn so that we're in a straddle position, facing away from the wall. So you can think of, if you have your arms out, your ankles will be right underneath your wrists feet are parallel or even slightly pigeon toed, slightly turned in. Now, you want your feet about six to eight inches away from the wall. Reach your hands down. This is where having two blocks could be useful. But I'm gonna just assume that people don't have two blocks. So then you'd sit back to the wall and be on your fingertips and lengthen out. And this is all about keeping long, neutral spine. So you think, think of Sit bones coming up the wall, heart reaching forward. Activate through your feet, through your legs. Spinning the inner thighs back. Keep your lower belly in and up, lengthening the front of the spine. Draw down the back. Shoulder blades draw down your back. Keep looking straight down at the floor. Now, if you're comfortable walking your hands forward a little more here, go ahead, just lengthen out a little more. And of course now, if you're really flexible, you can just lean slowly further and further down. But like I said, if, especially if it's a lower back issue, a lot of times it's better just to not push too intensely. Just easing in and lengthening. Okay, now from here, we'll just slowly come back up turn again to where we were, we're arms up the wall, and you're going to go to that halfway folded position, horizontal. But this time, take right foot forward, left foot back, and you might have to just play with the positioning a little bit. So you're going to you have your right foot pointing straight in towards the wall, and that back foot, the arch is bis the line from the front heel is bisecting the back arch. And then I just lean in, Lengthen out again, sit bones so I press into the wall, my sit bones push back, just like when we were doing it with both legs, but now it just feels very different. We stretch into the right hamstrings, press the ball of the right foot, spread the toes, lift through your thighs, maybe walk your hands down. You could turn out, if you can see with my one hand, to turn out there, and you just lean further. So depending on your flexibility level, you might be up higher, you might be down lower. So just line everything up. Do not collapse into this part of the reason for doing it with the wall like this. Okay, so then come slowly up. Start over with that horizontal position. Left foot forward, right foot behind. So the left foot is pointing straight in. Square up towards the front. You can see how the wall informs your lines, right? And just activate through your legs. And just slowly lean a little further, a little further. Keep lengthening, so you're pushing, so you're trying to get grounded. It gives you that grounding through the back foot, that back heel. And you're still lengthening, sternum forward. Plant the ball of the front foot, spread the toes. Yeah, maybe just lean in a little bit more. Breathe smoothly. Okay, so from there, we'll just we'll gradually come back up, turn away from the wall again. And so this time, again, the same beginning as that straddle, we're going to have your arms wide and just set the ankles so the distance of your wrists. Here I'm going to grab a block. 
So we'll go, we'll go a second warrior to the right. So turn the right foot out, bend the right knee. And we take the block just behind the right hip. So you want the feet, the ankles, to be about five inches away from the wall, or four, so that this block is bumping up against the outside of my right hip as I settle into the second warrior. Now, instead of bringing the arms out, bring the hands to your hips and think of spinning that right thigh externally, glance to the inside of the right knee, make sure it's tracking straight towards your toes and you're glancing, looking for the big toe there. You should just see the big toe. So you spin the right thigh out. That left thigh, let's just imagine we can pull it back towards the wall. Shoulders right up over the hips. Just be there grounding, spread the toes, ground the heels. Okay, now from here, slowly go towards the beginning of triangle pose. So you just shift this block, slide it along the wall, keep that hand, the right hand on the right thigh, just keep spinning that thigh out. Really connect the ball of the right foot to the floor, spread the toes, keep grounding evenly, ground the back foot. Now this is where it gets, it's one of the greatest variations of triangle pose, where you can lean into the wall. So take the top arm and just lean, reach up, Lean back that back top shoulder, just back into the wall, but keep spinning that front thigh externally. Maybe lean a little deeper if you feel ready to, but you'll see you don't you don't want to lean too far. Just keep your lines. Okay, and then slowly come back up, pivot, right foot in, left foot out. I'm shifting the block over on behind the left hip here, second warrior position, bending the left knee, again, ankles maybe five inches away from the wall, hands to the hips, just settling into your second warrior stance, but oriented away from the wall, right, or parallel to the wall. The left hand is spinning that left hip, just giving me that indication there where that should be, and I glance to sight on the inside of the left knee, make sure you see the big toe, not the rest of the toes. Don't let it, if you don't see the toe, then you're probably dropping the knee in too much. That's why we're going external rotation here. Shoulders right up over the hips. That back thigh, take that hand and pull it back. Now it may not move, but it's just this intention of pulling that thigh, engaging it, spinning that front thigh. Now from here, when you're ready, just slowly, you can shift the block and you're going to keep spinning at that front, top of the front thigh, the left thigh, spin externally, plant the ball of the front foot, lift through the quadriceps, keep that back thigh coming back towards the wall, and you slowly lean. And when you're ready, reach up and try to lean that back shoulder into the wall, and looking up. Seems like an innocent triangle pose, but it's the fact that you're in really good alignment makes it that much harder. Right? Many people will just cheat the alignment of their pose. Okay, then slowly come back up. Now, bring your feet in. We go to a half moon pose to the right. So basically, it's like you're pivoting to the right, like that triangle pose, except now we're doing it's like a mini triangle. You look down, bend the right knee. Bring the block with you. Bring your right hand onto the block. You're balancing onto the right foot. Now you get to use the wall again. This is one of the nicest variations of half moon pose. So just ground, really activate through that right foot. Kick straight back through the left leg. You can flex that foot. And just open and again lean the top shoulder back into the wall. That top hip back into the wall activating through your thighs and just turn and look up as best you can. So you really feel the activation and spin that lower arm externally still, the upper arm externally. The, okay? Good. When you're ready, just slowly step back down and we'll pivot and we'll switch to the other side. So you just go Right foot turns in, left foot turns out, like a mini triangle. Look down, bend the left knee, 
and then slide. You've got the wall behind you, so it's really comfortable leaning back, plant into your left hand on the block. Try to get your hips right up over your left ankle. Right? So there's not that much weight being, there is some on the block, but really you want this to be the fulcrum of the balance right over your leg. You just kick straight back through the right heel. Try to get that horizontal line, right? And then open and reach. Get that vertical line through your arms. Keep your lower belly lifting, lengthening. Lengthen through the top of the head and look up. You just use the wall. Just find that perfect lateral plane to work the pose in. It's just such a nice way to do the half moon pose. Feel the breath relaxed and smooth through the through nose. Just opening out. Good. When you're ready, just slowly step back down. And I'm going to give you an option of either doing a tree pose next or Utipta Hasta Parabhushtasana, which <laughs> some of you may not know what that is. Sometimes we translate it as a balancing big toe pose, which really doesn't tell you very much. So the tree pose would look like this. I'm going to take my right, so I have to be close enough, like the length of my thigh, that's how close I want to be to the wall. Take the right heel up and then bump that right knee against the wall. That's what makes really nice <laughs> tree variation. So again, have your hands at your hips and work that right hand on the right thigh, spin it externally, rub sit bones down, tailbone down, and then just focus on lengthening up through the sternum, through the top of the head. You don't have to worry about the balance so much here. Now, if this one feels really easy to you, come legs length away, then you're gonna just, so again, I'm still turned away from the wall. Take the foot up on the wall. So to adjust the distance. Now some of you, if you're pretty flexible, you could bring the leg higher, but don't overdo it because we're trying to keep this grounding of that hip. So again, hands at the hips and you just ground that lifted leg hip, the right hip. So you're spinning externally, just like we were doing in the triangle. And you can turn and look into the room, activating your thighs, lengthen up through the top of the head. Find that zing of the lift. The more you lift, the more you just lift through your whole body. Right? The more you extend out through the legs, the more you'll feel the stability. Okay, so let's go slowly to the other side. Now either the tree pose again, like this. I'm about a thigh's length away, and I bring the heel up. Oops, I'm a little too far here. So heel up, you bump the knee to the wall, and then again, hands at the hips, or you can go, you do that one, or you can go like this, go legs length away, hold the knee, and then slowly kick up on the wall. You can see this is a little tricky, to gauge the distance, and then you just get everything set. So either try, stay with that tree pose, or come to this one, and you just activate through the legs, ground that left, outside of the left thigh down, right, so just keep lengthening up, find that zing of the extension through the top of the head, lift and widen across the chest, good, and then when you're ready, you can slowly release, and I did say this was going to be about a 20 minute routine, right, so uh, we're going to go slowly into a wrap-up. This is one of my favorite things doing with the wall. It's a, it's a wall squat. So basically you have your legs shoulder width. And in order to get to the squat, you might want to just bend your knees and bring your hands forward. Squat slowly down and bring your heels closer and closer to the wall. Now, whether you get the heels down or not is not a big deal. But if you can, great. You just sit all the way down in it, and then you just find this comfortable support of the wall in your back. So either have your elbows on your knees, palms together, you just rest like that, and just keep ironing the, your lower back out. 
build a lumbar, relaxing the wall. And then, if you feel ready, you can reach your arms up and just lengthen out. Drop your chin in. There's a little challenge that we like to do every now and then, is to spin your palms back, elbows in towards your head, and then to touch your fingertips to the wall, keep settling your sit bones towards the floor, and you try to lengthen up, keep spinning your biceps back, elbows hug in, and just try to lengthen up. Drop your chin in, pull your front ribs in, Good. That's not easy, right? Now you can fake it and extend, but then you're going to lose that spin, right? So you keep spinning the elbows in. Okay. So hopefully this whole this whole routine is relatively simple. So I'm going to wrap it up by going to the legs up the wall, and this again is a classic use of the wall. And if you haven't done this before, you should do it as much as possible. <laughs> so basically, you come in sideways to the wall, so you gotta go really close in, and then bring your legs up. Now if you want to use a block here, I'll show you how to do it, but otherwise this is a great way to release the lower back that might feel a little strained. And so your legs up the wall, sit bones right by the, the wall, if you want to do a little bit of lift on a block or a folded blanket, you just want to make it make sure it's nice and flat surface. So you push your feet, your heels into the wall, your feet into the wall, and then tuck that block under you. So either way, being flat on the floor can feel really good. And being slightly lifted just gives you a little more of an inversion. So you let the shoulders settle. Now, before we just keep the legs straight up. Let's do a supta baddha position. So the soles of the feet come together, the knees go out. And just relax your knees towards the wall. If you want, you can just rest your thigh, your hands on your thighs. And just breathe smooth and relaxed. Release the back of the neck. Soften your eyes. Now, you could probably do this much longer in your own home, your own time, but I'm gonna just gradually take you to a wrap up here. So just a couple more breaths in this position, where if you want to just ease a little more stretch into that position by using your hands, you can. But then, slowly, Bring the legs and spin your inner thighs towards the wall, inner heels up towards the ceiling. So you're just pushing your heels up and just stay here for our final position. And just letting go. It's like imagine all that work that you did and the legs just draining out. Soften your eyes and your face. And you can see what a wonderful position this is to relax in, but also to create a semi-inversion and to create back release. If you don't want anything on your back, just take it out and just feel that full release in your lumbar. Now you can even bring your feet onto the wall flat and have it like this so that you get even more of this flex tip position but with the lower back really flat. And then we'll slowly bring the knees all the way in. And then gently roll to the side whenever you're ready. <coughs> and it's interesting doing these presentations, well, especially if I'm doing something really mellow. <laughs> so
it's uh, off, off there relaxing while you guys, so if you're doing it, great. You can always come back to it another time. I see some people I know. Good to see you guys. And so that's it for my wall yoga for today. Hope you appreciated it. And just remember that we're live streaming yogasynthesis.com. And it's really good to see some of your names there. And be even better to see your faces in person. Maybe we'll have to do FaceTime or something. So love you guys. Take care and come check out the class live streaming yogasynthesis.com. Stay healthy, stay strong, and talk to you soon. Namaste.